felt as well. Okay. Recording in progress. All right. Oh, it doesn't go any higher. Shoot. Why? That should. Okay, so here I'm set up for a landscape. It wasn't the one that I thought I had selected. Uh, but it's one that I'm familiar with. It's from Maryland's Eastern Shore uh, near the Blackwater Refuge. And um, maybe I can share the screen. This. Uh, This is the image for YouTube. And let's see if I can get it up for uh, Zoom for Zoom too. Okay, so um, here, let's uh, let's see if I can share the screen. This has been unsuccessful so many times. Hey, what is that? It's so easy to share the screen on computer. This is the cell phone. Ah, I'm going to skip this. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can see it from here. But it's a nice little landscape scene. I'm going to get it from the eastern shore. I'm going to use my standard palette. So here, let's stop the screen share real quick. Why is this not doing it? All right, there we're back. Okay. So uh, just uh, normally I like flake white. This is titanium. It's just really cool and very strong pigment. So I like I like Kremnitz white better, pure lead white. And then Cad Lemon, Cad Yellow Medium, Cad Red Light, Alizarin Crimson, uh, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, uh, Raw Umber. This is Chrome Green. I like Sap. Whatever. Yeah, I'll, I'll use it. Uh, Thalo Blue, Ultramarine Blue, and Ivory Black. I like black. Some people don't. Um, some people don't use their colors. I do. Um, I don't know. Find, find your way. I can tell you exactly why every pigment is on my palette and what I use it for. And I, I usually don't have any troubles that would stop me from, uh, you know, mixing almost anything that I want. Every once in a while, you know, something like permanent rose or Indian yellow or Maybe I'll do a little experiment with other things. Like I said, I, I don't really use chrome green, but there it is. So uh, I'll use it for this one. Uh, like always, uh, I paint with black oil. Now, I, the tradition I was growing up, I, I was started with was uh, through the Schuler School of Fine Arts. Uh, my mentor is Ann Schuler. She was the, the assistant for Jacques Merge. And Merge uh, really dug through all the all the research he could do. He was the conservator for the head conservator for the Louvre in the 30s and um, got a Legion of Honor prize for creating a medium that painted like the black oils, like the uh, old masters. He uh, 
dug through a lot of the research and the archives of the Louvre and all his professional experience with all the other, uh, you know, conservators and things like that, the restorers. He got to experience the old master paintings more intimately than most, being that he was in charge of keeping them looking in good shape and restored and uh, great for the viewers of the museum to come and see. So whether you agree with that or not, I don't really care because it paints great. So if we, if we don't want to get into, you know, this is the right material, that's the right material, this is the wrong material, whatever. I, you know, what I care about is that it paints great. Now, I don't actually make it into the medium because I don't really care if it drips a little bit. Um, and so Merge medium really just has the binder. And uh, I don't really care about that. So. Uh, the binder just lets it be a McGilp, like a painter's butter. And um, the uh, the idea of it being, you know, semi-solid, like thixotropic gel, I, that, that part doesn't really um, appeal to me. So it, it's, it's not a big deal to me that it drips a little bit. And um, the binder isn't really that important to me. So... Uh, I use just black oil on my palette. It has that uh, lead in it that helps it dry uh, overnight pretty aggressively, but slow enough to paint wet and wet for a good long a la prima sitting. And then if I want to dry painting the next day, I've got it. It has this nice effect of setting up just a little bit during the painting, and um, I really like that too. And so that little bit of lead in there is nice. The fact that it's already um, pretty darkened and that my painting really can't darken that much after, after, you know, you know, years and years of aging is nice in my opinion. But uh, again, I, I, I'm more concerned with the idea that it, it paints well and I, I like painting with it. I've painted with many me me uh, mediums. I've, I've tried as many commercial ones as I get my hands on. And, you know, there's really some of them might take a little bit of getting used to. This one might be slick. This one might be, um, you know, dry feeling. But really, at the end of the day, it's all it's all about, uh, you know, the, these these fine art fundamentals. And you're just using the material to get you there. So um, I usually don't let materials uh really be the factor of my art it's it's going to be more of like i like painting with black oil because i i paint well with it and that's really the, the only consideration i need to make okay so up to a little bit of a slow start here been yammering too much but um this, this little landscape scene, I've, I've driven by it a million times. I, I photographed this a long time ago. And so it's one of my scenes. I'm very familiar with it. Uh, the Maryland's Eastern Shore is a place I've been to a million times. And um, it's nice to, to you know, I, the image that I had picked out. Um, oh, gosh darn it, cat. No, 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 no. Oh, troublemaker. <laughs> okay well he bumped everything but that's all right <laughs> silly cat anyway um it's nice when you take the shot yourself you can kind of put yourself there and you can think about uh where you want to go with the painting and what you can get away with i um i like some aspects of this uh little composition here but i'm not wed to it I'm going to do a couple things. There's a, there's things that I want to change in it. Uh, just looking at the photo and deciding, you know, some, some artistic decisions, but also, um, you know, how to frame it in, what to eliminate, what to keep. And, um, the other thing too, is just let the painting speak to me. So, uh, I'm assuming that in the rapid paced nature of Ala Prima, then I'm going to do things that aren't exactly like the photo, but I'm not wed to the photo. I just wanted to have a couple little principles that make it uh, seem like there's a proper amount of depth 
with um, atmospheric perspective and linear perspective. So linear perspective works like, uh, you know, if we have an eye level that uh, that uh, relative things diminish in size according, you know, down to eye level. Oh, gosh, darn it, cat. Get off of here. Um, the other thing is uh, atmospheric perspective. So everything's going to get uh, grayer in the, the distance. It's going to get less texture. It's going to get less uh, contrast. It's going to get a little less... Um, Kind of warmth to the colors they're going to get bluer grayer uh because there's more atmosphere between you and the and the scene and uh with those two things combined then i know what i can i can problem solve with and i know how to create the painting that i want so um i'm already making some creative decisions here about what i want to change and um where i want to go with it Generally speaking, I want to work from distance to foreground, but I, I don't really stick to that uh, religiously because what I want to do is have my darks be nice and rich. Now, I'm going to go a little bit extra colorful for what I see in the image. And um, again, I'm going to be making some artistic decisions as to like this, this tip of the roof is obscured, but I'm eliminating some of those trees. This tree is technically over here, but I wanted to put it over here. Um, the lead-in of the marshes. I'm going to um, pull the, the foreground grasses back, but I'm not going to let them be a solid border. I'm just going to let them cascade off the edge as a counterbalance to this. So already, um, right here, and just, just thinking it through, I'm already going to be changing the composition that I have. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. <laughs> this cat's being a pain right now. <laughs> He's jumped on two computer keyboards already. And um, he's trying to nuzzle my brush as I paint. He's a goof. Aren't you, Sam? Ow, he's digging into my knee. Crazy cat. Oh, ouch. Here, Sandra. Here's here's Sam digging into my knees. <laughs> Goofball. Hey, Liz. Hi, Hans. How's the computer? How's the camera? It's getting nuzzled by a cat right now. I can see uh, exactly what you're doing. Good, good, good. Settle cat. So, uh, Liz, you just joined me. I was, I was just going over some of the things that I'm intentionally changing about the photo. I took this photo myself a long time ago. Um, and it's of uh, Maryland's Eastern Shore. It's a bridge near uh, the Blackwater Refuge leading up to Hooper's Island. And um, really like this scene. I've, I've painted plein air on this bridge before. You can't see the, I'm not painting the bridge, so you can't really see that. So I guess you wouldn't know what I'm talking about there, but um, the decisions I've made, ow, cat, stop it. <laughs> the decisions I've made so far is, is the way I've zoomed in, obviously, I've caught a lot of the image uh, to kind of be a little bit more intimate, a little bit closer. But I've moved uh, a tree over that was way over here, over to here. There were some low trees that were obscuring the top of the building. And so I got rid of that. And the, the grasses just go straight across like a, this is a big land mass that's going across. But um, I'm, stop, cat. I'm going to... Um, Probably just angle it here. Now, what's cool in the photo is the the cast shadow from these these little marsh grasses here go dark shadow against the light grasses. So that would be a little bit of a compromise, but I just don't like that it's a solid uh, line here. So I don't know. Uh, sometimes you you 
gain in one way and lose in another, and that, that's fine, right? So, this cat doesn't settle, I'm going to have to take five and get him out of here because he is clawing me up by kneading into my leg and he's bumping the camera because it's getting more attention than he is. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's super distracting right now. Ow! You're wild. Yeah, you. I'm looking right at you. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of grasses that go straight across. I did show the reference earlier. Um, I'll do it again, but I, I really again I'm, I'm making creative decisions that are outside of what the the photo is doing anyway. But I I can go over some of the things anyway. But really, there's some tall grasses that obscure the bottom edge of the water, and I'm going to just let them run off the image here instead of going straight across. And that gives you a little bit of this, this beautiful kind of, it was a sunrise. I woke up early for this one. And um, no, 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 that's the wrong side of the bridge. The other side is where the sunrise was. This is a sunset. Um, <laughs> it's a long time ago. But um, yeah, I want to, I want to create the zigzag. It's going to lead in. This is your Hogarth curve into here, back into here. And that's going to slow the eye down into the scene and uh, allow for a couple things to happen. This is going to go from really kind of blues, lavenders to oranges, pinks here. And I, I mentioned earlier, my game plan is to just way overdo all the colors just to start, just to get a foundation in because these greens are going to be kind of dull. It's going to be the sky that's vibrant and the, the, the water that's going to be vibrant. And these these atmospheric perspective trees back here are going to be like a gray blue and they're going to be striking. I think I, think. in my mind, it's already beautiful. <laughs> now I just got to get it there. <laughs> what size is your panel? Uh, it's, it's um, eight by 10. It might be a little bit under that because I think these boards were um, I didn't want to sell them to students because I think they were not quite eight by ten. So they, they might not fit a ready made, but I, I, I know the framer of the Schuler school, so I'll get away with it. I know them real well, kind of a jerk. You gotta gotta really hassle them, to get things done. <laughs> <laughs> He's a nice guy. I know. All right, so this is keyed up hot. This is going to be in shadow. It's probably too high chroma too. But like I said, I'm going to establish some darks that I want to keep kind of thin for now. And I'm okay with this being too rich and too bright. That's part of the strategy. There's also a tree that's going dead center on this building. I really don't like it. Uh, but I love the scene. So. <clears throat> so I'm going to get these darks in, probably under dark, uh, just like I said, and uh, I'm going to air on just slightly too high chroma. And, and I mentioned earlier that I am going to uh, get these, uh, these darks in kind of thin and rich. And uh, then uh, they have just something to read against with the sky. So... A lot of landscape artists really dogmatically say go from distance to foreground. And I completely agree that that's a good strategy. It's just not the way I do it because I, I like to have rich darks. So uh, I don't want opaque paint down where I'm going to put these rich darks down. And uh, again, it's just it's not a right or wrong. It's the way I like to do it. And I always like to explain why. I don't like to just say... Um, you know, A, this is what I'm doing, or B, I, I don't like to tell students, like, you know, there's one way to do it. You have to do it my way. This is, this is the the only the only method that looks good or works or anything. That's just, I don't know. 
I think there's a lot of really great opportunities to do little experiments and have a good strategy for, for doing it your way. So again, I'm not starting with the distance and, and I'm already kind of acquiescing to the idea that these are too, too bright and too rich for this time of day, but I'm going to try to make it work because if I can get these nice and, and rich, then I'll be re reacting the sky to it. And I'll be painting into these edges and then superimposing the leaves back over the edge. So that's, that's the strategy. And um, it's just a start. And I, I will always mention that the start is, is just an opportunity to get some ideas down. And I'll be, I'll be worrying about making it a really great looking painting later. And hopefully it gets to that status, but <laughs> no guarantees, no promises. But uh, again, just uh, just trying to figure out where I'm going with an idea of if I had to err, it'd be this way as opposed to that way. I'd rather err on the side of maybe slightly too light and too colorful to balance everything else too, because we're going to be constantly making decisions based on what we have. I mean, that's just natural. And um, the painting is just going to build around this intensity. So a little unconventional as far as a lot of uh, landscape artists go. I mean, not radical either, but yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be hope, hopefully uh, pull off some pretty vivid colors. Well, I also want to try to keep it almost like it's plein air in that I've got to move kind of rapidly. Uh, I am going to get this done in three hours, which is longer than my my plein air paintings. I don't I don't usually paint a plein air painting longer than hour and a half or so. Not not by a rule. If if I if I get there a, a little early and I decide that I can. Um, you know, do some of the drawing for the areas that aren't going to shift. So like, you definitely don't want to draw clouds. You don't want to draw uh, shadow shapes. You don't want to draw the bird on the post. That's going to be long gone. Um, you don't want to draw, you know, really anything that's, that's going to pick up and move, but there are going to be plenty of things that you can establish without that. And, um, that's where you can spend the beginning time. But then the painting part itself, I usually stick to about an hour and a half. And the reason is because that's, you know, you're going to get the, uh, the light shifting that whole time. And it'll be pretty radically different after an hour and a half. So not, not truly three hours, but um, just because the preliminary drawing can, can take, uh, you know, the time before getting started. And I'm not worried about style. I'm not worried about brushwork. I'm not worried about um, any sort of accuracy. All I'm really concerned about is just getting some broad information down, something I can react to, creating a sense of darks, and then I'm going to go pretty crazy uh, garish bright with the sky, and then just slightly reduced for the water. And then it's a matter of pausing, reflecting, and just saying, okay, what, what needs to happen to get this underway? Who joined me? I admitted somebody. So who's on? I'm Karen. Oh, hey, Karen. I'm going to be cutting into these uh, bushes, so I'm not going to bother with edges. I'm going to be adding a lot of browns and, and yellows and uh, some rich colors into the backlight. So this is just foundation work. And all of this is going to be in pretty low light considering that we're in twilight. So... 
Taking some guesses. So much depends on the blocking that all this is just super tentative. All right, so uh, now I'm taking some guesses. <clears throat> I'm going to do the sky first. Again, a lot, a lot of landscape artists will start with the sky really early. Instead of all this blocking work, they'll do the line work and then start from the most distance to the most foreground. Which makes sense because you're just superimposing layers of depth. And again, I, that's not a crit the fact that I'm doing it a different way is not a criticism. I, I think that's a really good way of doing it. Uh, I just do just do things my way. Sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse. So like I said, I'm, I'm going to try to get these uh, colors just crazy. Um, rather bright and garish colors and we'll play play with the information from there it's all just a guess and i'm going to uh make some good decisions after i get a, just a simple guess at everything love that color that's that's like pure phthalo blue and white practically cerulean but without the uh expense <laughs> cerulean's expensive So I am probably going to go pretty thick with the paint, but this is the thin layer that I'm going to just base the uh, early decisions on. It's really, I mean, that's all relative. My, my thin paint is usually pretty thick compared to some people's thin paint, but not a big deal. Oh, man, Thalo. Sandra, you'll appreciate this. He's finally settled. Look. There he is. <laughs> he was tearing me up. It's going to make for a weird video. All right, back to it. Still haven't found the purple that I want. So attempt number like four, whatever it takes. I might do it. I have to go darker with that tree. Again, that, that's why I block things in so tentatively. And uh, the the rich darks, I was trying to get away with just being on the light side of the rich darks. And I still have plenty of creative freedom for, for establishing my darkest dark, which I'm kind of adjacent to, but I'm not there. And so um, shift this blur. So once I've gotten my best guess at everything, then we'll talk about next steps, but I'm, I'm just going to rapidly kind of block in this, oh, that's dark, um, rapidly block in this sky, and then, um, cat, there. then the water. The, the scene that I'm painting from has a lot more sky, which kind of would have been nice, but I, I wanted to make most of the action through the water. So it just, there had to be a slightly compromise, but um, I might, I might do a little push pull with how much of this uh, band of clouds that I see. 
again, I've already made a lot of decisions, but the painting also has to have a voice too. Silly cat, no. Hey. That little bit of silly. <sighs> he's a one year old cat, but he's still really kitten like. And he's just attacking everything in the studio for attention. I'll probably just go blue or with that uh, darker with that blue. Let's see how much I can push the brightness. I'm picking a blue that's more like the sky, but still bright enough to read against these distant trees. I like their value. I'm not quite sold on this blue quite yet. But we're getting there. I'll just a balancing act and I'm not really uh, wed to anything yet. It's gonna be just a process of discovery. Yeah, and I'm going to reduce this purple cloud. Again, just kind of talking to my painting, seeing what it needs. How was the workshop, Liz? It was really great. Yeah? How's Nick doing? Uh, No, I, I was asking you. <laughs> I learned a lot, I think, and I'm looking forward to applying it in class. Great. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the things that, you know, that you've been trying to get me to see, especially the little, the value changes. Um, yeah, I think, um, I think I got more of a handle on it now. Well, it's good to hear it all in a different voice. I mean, by and large, it's going to be variations of the same fundamentals, uh, even with that kind of Schuler voice, because, you know, obviously Nick was a Schuler grad, yeah. but uh, he also learned a lot from, uh, you know, watching Blair. So, like, he, his style is a little bit more like Blair's than mine. So, that's good variation to, to witness. So, yeah, I mean. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and Ileana and Genesis, they really, really did well in the in the workshop. I'm sure you did too. Well, I'm happy with what I did. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah, I learned a lot. It, and, you know, it's stuff that you've been telling me all along. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I can show you. Well, like I said, I really like the way Nick paints. I bet you learned a lot. Yeah, it was good. Better.
Okay, so uh, I've been making a, uh, some slight adjustments to the values and colors. I'm trying to, I have a scheme in mind that I'm, I'm trying to reach, but I'm not going to dwell on this area for too long. It's not exactly what I want yet, but um, it's a guess. And that's all I was really looking for. But the, uh, the adjustment will come after I block in the water and then revisit the landscape a little bit. And then, um, then I'll know exactly where I'm going. But I have a good feel for it right now. And yeah, I don't like to dwell in any one area for too long. Not in the start. So having said that, I've got to convince myself to break away from it, which is always the hard part. Yeah, okay, so, um, wow, it really looks different in the screen. The water here is really similar to the sky. I feel like I was trying to get away with this being a little on the bright side. I probably have to darken it down. This will seem brighter because if you just if you just go by how you know your paint, uh, you know how you're mixing the paint, and you just kind of know it's like whatever you're looking on here is a little deceptive, and. Um, I don't think I can brighten this too much. Might be able to brighten it a little, but um, we'll see. These are all on the skinny side because, you know, I like to add the textures into the layers. So I will be slightly adhering to that idea of uh, distance to foreground, but after this, this block in. So again, I, I don't really do it um, from the start. I'm just building in guesses still and trying to preserve some rich darks and these darks aren't really even as dark as uh they probably ought to be but i'm giving them a chance in that they're um you know i'm trying to create a really bright and vibrant painting So all this is thin paint and I'm being really generous with the water because the reflections are going to dip down. These textures are going to go over top of it. So the, the strategy of keeping it thin is a really good idea, even though, you know, I can handle thick paint and I will be, uh, it's just a matter of, I know I'm going to be making some adjustments. Those adjustments are going to make the painting a little thicker. I know I want to have nice bold textures here. That means that the brush stroke has to be thicker than the previous layer. And so it's a really good strategy to keep this um, a little on the thin side, just for now, just for now, just while I'm making decisions. Jeez, Getting some bad paint mixtures. That's better. So um, now the whole thing's been blocked in. Now I can start making good choices. Whereas before everything was just a guess, it was heavily influenced by the tone of the the, the board. I think I want to do a little bit more pink in this area, and then I'll probably, like I said, I'll probably go a little bit darker with some of these in here. And I was intentionally erring on the side of just maybe a little bit bright and a little bit too colorful. Just because I would be basing the sky off of that, those characteristics. So what ended up happening at this stage is that if I could articulate it, is just to say that as I was trying to make this bright enough, it just couldn't read that way because this is arguably a little bit too bright. But um, I was able to push it a little bit to try to make this work. 
And so it's only going to be a little tweak to get this somewhat right. So it was already an, admit an admittance from the very beginning that um, that the scheme probably wasn't going to work. But it was, again, it's one of those, if I erred, I'd want to err on the side of, in this case, a little bit too bright and a little bit too vibrant. And so um, now we're just going to do a little bit of adjusting. But I'm, I'm quite willing to compromise just a little bit on uh, realism in three dimension for the sake of a, a vibrant painting. I just don't want it to look so far off that it doesn't, it doesn't uh, have a proper sense of distance or uh, color theory or any of those things. And so I'm brightening all of this. Again, I wasn't happy with the way it was blocked in. But I also wasn't willing to dwell on it for so long that I um, didn't develop the rest of the painting into that best guess. The redraw is going to get these edges right. It's going to get the tops of the grasses into these planes. And these adjustments that I'm making now to try to make the sky brighter at the expense of a little bit of color intensity is going to uh, make it so that I can preserve some of the uh, middle value nature of this uh, little crab house, little boat house. Boat house. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. Another terrible night of sleep. It's, it's gotten on for too long. <laughs> My brain is hurting. been like, I don't know, a week and a half since I've had a, I've had like one decent night of sleep in that whole time. I, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say any of that as an excuse, right? You know, the painting is what the painting is. <laughs> I like the yes, I've, it's got a lot of potential. I just, I just didn't want to like, suggest that you know it has anything to do with the way i'm painting or if it did so what it's not it's not an excuse all right so let's go practically off white up here leave that little glow all right so now i'm getting into a scheme that i like Again, I don't really ever look for that beginning of the painting to be anything accurate. It's just kind of like a little trial and error. And so I'll probably be adding some really thick paint as I get further into the painting. But again, I'm doing a little bit of redraw or rebalancing. And, um, and then I'll be getting into uh, the landscape again before I do anything too crazy. So I'll be doing some impastos. I'll be doing uh, some really thick textures in the foreground. And in my mind's eye, it's going to push all this way, way back. And we'll see, right? It's going to just be uh, uh, try something and then adjust, try something and adjust. Because, it, it, you know, the painting might suggest that there's, you know, that I could just copy it or whatever, but there's still a matter of keying the colors and values and then rebalancing them to each other. So even if I was copying the photo verbatim, which I'm not, uh, then that would still be a part of the equation. But I have a feeling this is gonna take a lot shorter than that um, leopard. That leopard took like five hours. This is probably gonna be more like three. I'm moving pretty rapidly. All right, so, okay, good. So, oh man, those colors are awful on the screen. I wonder if it's just an angle thing. Huh, wish I could get it closer too. I don't know if I can, 
I bought a different camera and then I returned it. Maybe that was a mistake. Whoa. Shoot. Because that camera that I bought, I didn't like the video quality, but I did like that it could zoom. It was highly rated, so maybe I just didn't give it enough chance. What didn't you like about it? <sighs> I thought it was a little blurry. I didn't like the color so much. Okay. But um, I could zoom, which I don't like how far away some of the camera shots look. And the further out you get, the um, more pixelated it gets. Yeah, okay. And now we'll fix the angle and then we're good. This so, color is just still way off. Now, um, I know it's preliminary drawing, but is that color in the water like a reflection of the sky? It's going to be, but uh, I mean, looking at Zoom, the colors are way too yellow for the actual okay. painting. I don't know what it looks like on Zoom. But there's a lot of pink and purple in here that's not really reading on the on the other camera but i don't know i'm not going to dwell on that for too much well the other thing that's missing is i told you it's like i i was guessing on the side of a little bit bright and a little bit colorful quite on purpose because it was going to be a balance of just how how vivid i could kick the uh, sky and um this is all going to get darker and it's going to make all this brighter but I don't know why none of the reds, I mean, this is, this is a pink purple. I mean, it's a very violet purple and that's really not reading on the screen. It's looking green, but I don't know. I don't know what to do about that. So I'm going to not worry about it and keep moving. What I could do, that's awfully yellow. It is in the it is in the photo, but again, you're you're not you're not ever really going to capture the colors of a of a sunset too accurately with photo. Just kind of have to put yourself there and uh, decide. Okay, if I was standing right there, what would it look like? And just just think about the photo reference as just a hint. It's just a guide. It's not anything that you have to follow verbatim. You just have to understand the rules of uh, pushing depth and. Um, just inviting people into a, a space. And then there's creative decisions that might go a little bit outside of, of strict realism. And so I'm going to definitely be pushing the envelope on those. Berg. Okay. So um, now the tree, I'm going to be pushing not strict greens like I was doing there. I'm going to be pushing a little bit of uh like browns and you know alizarin in there you know alizarin will turn green into a brown but um i don't want it to be like a rich green back here and like i said i, I was i already had it in my mind that i was probably going to have to darken it and that was just verified by you know just how bright i could push the sky and so it's almost the exact opposite of what I do with still life in that um, on still life, I would air all my beginning guesses on the side of dark, right? And this side, I was, this time I was, I was going a little bit bright on purpose for the idea of, you know, just finding a balance of something that's supposed to be a direct light source like the sky. What I also don't want to do is put too much in the way of detail back here. So I might smooth out what I've done already. Yeah, better. go bigger too. It's going to be out of scale to the photo, but so what?
I'm going to be going for a pretty deep purple for the shadows here. But what I don't want to do is my darkest dark. Darkest dark will probably be in this bank line. I'm going to definitely go darker for the building. Um, again, it's going to push the sky way back when I get that more locked in. So the way I keyed it already did its job. It, it created a, a value that I was going to read the sky against and push it a little bit on the bright side. It's not that I couldn't have blocked it in that way if I picked the proper values here. I'm just trying to think of, you know, a little bit of efficiency and kind of, oh, gosh, darn. Oh. The, um, Sandra, are you still there? Oops. Sandra, you're still there? I don't know. Somebody else is too. The cat jumped on the darn computer. Anyway, all right. So. Yeah, okay, good. I've got, to, I've got to find something to do with that cat. He's going to. Yeah, if I can feel Friday again. Well, the last time I was painting, he was fine. I guess he was still scared of being in a new place. But now he just feels like being in the middle of everything. So. Could be super cute if not for being super distracting while I'm trying to <laughs> trying to get something done here. I might end up smoothing this out a little bit. Um, I don't want it to be too busy if this doesn't get even busier. So we'll play that by ear. And um, again, just kind of working from the distance to the foreground. Not dogmatically, but just if I feel like hopping over somewhere else, I will. I don't really like to stay in one area for too long. Not until the painting's pretty well established, but. I'll understand the sky a lot better once this tree gets in. And that was another reason for really getting into it. I want the light to be pretty warm. And so I'll be I'll be exaggerating for a little while with oranges and, and yellows and and stuff. So it, it may not last. It may not uh, endure into the painting for very long. But at least that hint will be there to react to as I build the painting. So like that red is ridiculous. That was just a mistake. But that's fine. Again, I don't have to get anything right yet. We're not even an hour into the painting. And um, like I said, I, I could probably keep this to probably get it done in two hours. But uh, I don't know. I'll take my time and just play play with it.
a lot of times if you don't exaggerate, you're going to fall short. So I would much rather err on the side of exaggeration. Some people are exactly the opposite. They want to put in something really subtle and build the intensity, especially if you come from a watercolor tradition. There is nothing wrong with that. I'm just trying to tell you where my uh, where where my thought process is. It's always going to be from the side of pushing and then reducing if I have to. But everything that you put on early on, that's going to be what you're reacting to as you build the painting. And that's what I was saying is I, I keep this in intentionally bright with the idea that that would push the sky and the water even brighter. And now I have to rebalance it, knowing, knowing that it's probably going to be too bright. And it was. So whatever. No big deal. I'm going to put, now that I've put something else to react to, I'm going to put there's this really kind of neat red outline to this cloud here. It's not a perfect line. I've got to rough it up a little bit. Don't know why none of the reds are showing up in that video feed, though. That's kind of bothering me a little bit. I know not to react to it too much, but it's hard not to like you look over and it's like well none of the colors are right <laughs> i think the board behind the panel washes out the colors that's possible let's see what happens i need it as a backing board because this easel oh my gosh why is it stuck this easel is um It has big, um, big slats that the painting could fall through. Why is this so awkward? What would happen if you put a, a black piece of cloth? I'd have to hunt for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, short answer, I guess. And now that I have nudity in my painting, in my uh, <laughs> video feed, it's going to get tanked by YouTube. <laughs> Oops. Old, old figure painting. I like the way this one turned out. This was from one of the Friday sessions when we first started getting back into it. I don't have anything dark. Not without really looking for it. So let me just move this over. But the colors are much better. You were right, Sandra. The... Um, Still at a funny angle. That's better. And now I'm back into nudity. Not for me. I mean, just a touch, but. <laughs> well, keep it family friendly. I can't actually see. Oh, this is so much dead time on the. Why is this doing this? You're experiencing technical difficulties. I tried to get the camera closer, and I think that's where I started screwing up the perspective. But I, I like the colors a ton better against this figure painting. Where is my painting? I can't get... Oh, man. There, fine. I'm having so much trouble right now. <laughs> This is not good watching. <laughs> Distracting, but it does make a difference. I have two cats on my lap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're you're we're in the same boat then because um, oh, 
don't know why I can't get there. It is fine. Now I can see what I'm doing. Okay, good. Uh, everyone. There. Is that better for you, Sandra? I don't think I can get it any bigger on the screen as much as I try. But anyway, we're back. might make the decision to go a little bit funky with um, some backlight and uh, that, that might be fun. You mean for the little shack? For the shack, for the trees, for the, let's well, see, I'm already putting a little bit here. Oh, yeah. So I'm just kind of playing a little bit, um, just kind of seeing where I want to go, trying to look for creative decisions that would make it more than just kind of, you know, grasses and water and sky, which plenty exciting, but, um, you know, put a little artistic tweak on it and uh, turn it into something maybe just a little creative. The, um, the scene is nice. I don't, I don't really need to do anything to it to make it uh, artistic, but just trying to, wheels are turning. You know, I like to, to kind of play around a little bit with uh, paint and, Create something that's maybe just a little unique. Nothing too radical. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of artists out there that do some pretty wild effects that I really appreciate. So I haven't worried about grass blades yet. I'm not going to yet. I think it's going to look even better when I get um, my full range of values in. So I, I, I like to get that initial guess in without too much fuss. And um, yeah, sometimes I, that original guess, that's what gets preserved by building stuff around it. So it might very well be that the water stays, but when these, these reflections get um, further down and I might get a little bit of ripple in there, and then I'll have these these high textured grasses in front of the edge. Um, it's it's going to change the way we see the water, and I'm looking forward to that. So now I'm putting in my my darkest dark. Again, artists like uh, Scott Powers, as magnificent as his paintings are, sometimes he'll he'll start the painting with these darkest darks as the very first consideration. I like to build up to that a little bit. And I would never, ever call what he does wrong because I really love his work. But again, we're, we're going to find our way. And so now I'm putting in my darkest dark. This is going to be my reference point for a lot of other stuff. And so I'm going to have this as a bit of a lead in into the painting as that sort of bank line uh, between the water and the grasses, the shadows of the grasses, and... Um, I might decide to smooth all this out a little bit for the sake of texture contrast, but um, you can hear how much I'm thinking about possibilities, and that that's going to change. All those things, all those ideas are going to change as the painting builds up, and I I get to have a conversation with the painting about style, right? What's going to support this this uh, painting in particular, not the photo, not the scene, not some theoretical landscape, but um, there's going to be some suggestions that the painting itself is going to, um, you know, get a voice. As rough as the, the grasses are and this block and stuff is, it does make the sky smooth. So 
that's going to be another factor for how much I smooth it down. I might not have to if I want to keep the sky really soft and um, subtle. It bodes well to have a little bit of texture in here. It just all depends on these foreground grasses. If they get really bold, they're going to uh, make this look smooth. This is rough enough to make that look smooth. And so it's all a matter of using uh, texture as a means of, of pulling the eye into space and um, I think I want to make actually even more space than I see here. But anyway, I finished my thought. <laughs> I got distracted. Um, yeah, just kind of let the painting speak. See where I want to go. Some subjects you really have to be kind of more beholden to anatomy or, um, you know, if I had a lot of buildings in here at three, at, you know, two point perspective, then I'd have to worry about perspective a little bit more, uh, linear perspective. This painting is going to be all about atmosphere perspective and playing with texture and color. I'm keyed up super bright. That was part of the design from the beginning. If this painting gets garish, then I might mute some things down, but I kind of like the idea of it being very vibrant. Again, airing on the side of bright and vibrant. Now, I don't like something that just happened in that uh, this corner of the building is right on the edge of this bank line or you know, like there was some distant um, water line. So I'll change that. But coming along. So what if this ended a little higher? I'll just change this angle too. And then maybe even a little bit darker because it doesn't really quite read against that distant uh, distant range of trees. Again, I'm not really worried about detail or texture yet. So these aren't planks of buildings. It's just I'm being simple with the the brush is just coming down. It's not it's not meant to be anything intentional. So the grasses are supposed to diminish in intensity. So this is not as intense as this. This is kind of in between the two. And I'm playing with just subtle colors. Almost every time I touch the palette, I'm changing the uh, color mixes just a little. I'm really being conscious of uh, throwing some, you know, complementary colors for the grasses. I'm throwing a lot of reds in the shadow, uh, some purples. I'm going to light uh, tips of, of grasses with yellow light coming from that sort of twilight colors. And so there's a lot of wheels turning when I'm when I'm painting these. It's not just a matter of, uh, you know, see it and paint it because I'm, I'm making a lot of decisions. And sometimes those are not going to work. And that's OK. That has to be a little darker. Oh, 
with somebody. Hello? Okay, so I'm gonna design this foreground and add the texture. And then the idea is just gonna simply be, what does it need from there? And so I'm definitely gonna rework the sky a little bit and um, I probably have some, uh, some more adjustments to make than that. But uh, again, it's just a matter of yeah, you know, just taking some risks. I'm, I'm playing with a uh, color key that's higher than the photo for sure. And I'm just trying to make it work, which is going to have some a little bit of growing pains in it. The style might also have to change just a little in that, um, again, I, I don't want pure tech. I don't want a lot of texture back here. And it all depends on this. So there's going to be a big reaction to this. And then I'm going to work all the edges, these little grass blades that diminish in size. And we'll really be cooking. The one, the only concern from there would just be if uh, am I going to overwork it? But in my head, it's going to work. You know, I'm going to. So I am intentionally bringing the brush strokes in a vertical direction now. Before I wasn't, uh, like I was saying with the building, uh, that that wasn't really the idea. But this is directional brushwork because these grasses are, uh, you know, they do have direction to them. Now, I can see that if that's the reflection of this, this has to have more volume. And I don't want it really running into that plane too much. So again, another just little problem solve. I'm going to bring the water into here. Just a little bit higher. It th this configuration isn't exactly like the photo. Again, I'm, I'm making creative decisions that sometimes are good and sometimes need a little bit more finesse than what I'm doing. Because right now that didn't quite work. But I, I want this idea that it's going to zigzag through the painting, that Hogarth curve, allowing uh, the eye to slow down through this whole journey through the painting. You know, you, a lot of times composition is about getting the viewer kind of stuck on your piece. You know, if you're in a gallery, you're competing with a lot of other things that require visual attention. If you're in somebody's, if, if it's a painting on your wall in your home, you kind of want to enjoy it. You don't want your eye just to go right through the composition. Uh, and so you can, you can think about ways of slowing it down. This, this idea of Hogarth curve is uh, just a really tried and true way of doing that. Okay, foreground, and then grass textures. And then I'll see if I have to re revisit all this. I think I still want to go brighter with the sky. I'm thinking about that. All right, so the grasses in the foreground might get a little bit of backlight from that sort of sunsetty sky. And so I just want to see what this looks like. Pretty dark. Huh. All right. I'm going to play with the textures over here. Again, they're going to make the water look very bright. 
going to make the water look very uh, smooth too. Hmm. Okay. This might be another opportunity for that really gnarly brush that I was using on the ostrich. You know, if I just want random textures as opposed to design textures, you know, we would get out the tiny brush and intentionally put them in or get the gnarly brush and randomly put them in. Oh, he needs to be photographed like that. He's kind of in my fancy still life with the shells. I don't think I have the space to add a cat into that painting. <laughs> okay. All right. So now I, I feel like I need, I have an idea where I want to go. I'm going to make these really bright and green. As if they're getting a little bit of light passing through them. I have to be mindful of the very human tendency to make repetitive shapes. The idea of superimposing over wet paint, um, the best strategy for that, it's also good for color, is that, oh, hey, Claudio. Um, the best strategy for that is that you're just going to go thicker than the previous layer. And so if you get into this rhythm of just doing a few brush strokes and then stopping, Mix up a brand new color, use a slightly different path to get there, and you're going to get a lot of nice little variety. So it's a double benefit. And um, you're, you're going to make sure that the brush is, is going to uh, put the paint right on top of this wet paint. It's not going to mix and make mud. And that's, that's, that's your formula for mud when you want to uh, just keep hacking away with the same brush stroke. And it... Um, it's just going to get thinner than that previous layer. It's just going to mix. And so I'm going to go back to the palette quite often. And while I'm at it, give it some variety. Even if I try to mix the same color rapidly, it's very likely that it's going to be slightly off, which is going to, again, it's just variety. But I'm intentionally mixing up the, the pigments that I'm using to mix the colors at the same time. If I didn't go big enough, then I'd have to cut water into the grasses. So I, I didn't really want to do that. And so I'm just going to make these grasses quite large. I might throw a th few stems in there later. But uh, again, I'm just kind of designing right now. Just kind of feeling my way through it. And um, I was mentioning some of the pitfalls of the texture back here. If this didn't seem like it was way more, then I can't really get away with that. So with that in mind, I'm going a little choppy with these uh, brush strokes in here, a little thick, a little fun. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be verbatim to these grasses. Uh, maybe somebody would come by and they'd say, oh, I really know the Eastern shores and you really blew it with those grasses. And again, you know, just I'm making artistic decisions, not necessarily copying a photo. So if somebody had that problem, I would just congratulate them for knowing their Eastern Shore landscape grasses, and you know maybe I wouldn't sell to them, but you always got to compliment somebody that that really knows their stuff, so that's nice. I could have elim eliminated these uh, bushes in completely, but there's a couple things I, I don't really like to have. Um, 
I, I kind of like the feel that the viewer can feel like they're on land. I, I like that a lot. So if I had started with the water, yeah, it would have been a nice painting. But I think there's just a little psychological idea that, you know, I'd be standing in these, you know, in the water. I don't have anywhere to feel like that. I'm part of the scene. Very minor consideration, but I, I like it. I think that's a nice, a nice touch. The other, the other thing is that um, technically the grasses go straight across. I thought that was boring. And so I'm changing that. I've keyed up the, the color chroma in this painting so much that some of it might have to get reduced. I don't think so yet, but it might happen. So uh, Liz, you were doing still life? Yeah. Still and it was well attended? Yeah, it was. Good. I think we had let me let me just do the counting. I think we had about ten people. Nice. Yeah, which is really all the room could hold. Um and I Luke Miller was there. Okay. Um, and you and um, oh, thank you, Sandra. Uh, and you and uh, you, Genesis yeah. and Ileana. Yeah. Um, and then John Shuby was there. He's everywhere. Yeah. Um. And the people from One Hundred Heads. A couple of people from that. And a couple of people I didn't know, but everybody was really nice and. You know, they had different skill levels. It was it was really nice. Good. Very good. I'm glad that was successful. Yeah, you ought to think about doing that maybe. It's, it's yeah. Because you're a good teacher too. Yeah. Most people have gotten exposure to my teaching through the classes. It would be kind of repetitive. At least here in Maryland, <laughs> in Baltimore. Well, maybe. I don't know. I mean, maybe for um, some of the people that, you know, have come through but haven't committed to something, you know? Maybe. Well, think about it. I can help you with it if you want. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, not the teaching part, but the logistics. No, I'll, I'll turn it over to you and you teach. And then I'll... <laughs> no, I, I, I knew what you meant. I, I was just having fun with you. Uh -huh. Oh, you know it. I mean, you know what you're doing. Well, I can say I'm better than I was four years ago. Good. I like that. I like that spirit. Thanks. I agree. It's always a work in progress. Uh, you know, I'm not, I don't, it's not even a joke saying that Schuler means student in German. It, it really technically does. But the spirit, the idea of it is that we're always trying to grow, right? We're, we're trying to be more accurate, more efficient, more expressive, uh, take bigger chances, make uh, bigger statements in our paintings. Uh, you know, there's just so much to do that, um, you know, I think you can be simultaneously happy where you are and, and still want to get better all the time. Yeah. I think that's true. And I couldn't have done it without you. Appreciate it. Okay. So now I've got an idea of where I'm going with the textures in the foreground. Are they done? Who knows? Um, they might end up being you know, if this is a looser painting, maybe that could be done. But the um, it gave me a foundation of the texture. So now 
the textures are going to be diminishing as they go into space. So that's going to make all this, uh, you know, just give me that sort of anchor to base uh, where I'm going with it on. And it's going to base on, be based on this as being kind of loose, you know, just little dots. I'm not making leaf shapes or anything. It's a contrast to read against these pinks and yellows and uh, greens and blues of the water. And so now I've got my, my foreground kind of, at least for now, anchored down. And now I can get into the textures. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build, not, before I, I started with just a simple version of the darks. And then I built from distance to foreground. And now I'm going to build from foreground to distance. And is that, you know, landscape best practices? Well, it is for me. So <laughs> uh, again, we uh, you can say all the all the uh, normal landscape ideas, and still say, okay, this is my this is my take on it. This is my variation. And um, again, I, I don't want everyone to paint diamond dozen. I want everyone to paint uniquely the way that kind of appeals to them. And so I'm, I'm just going over my strategies for creating distance and depth and then the consistent um, ideas of, you know, personal style, which anybody who's, who's paid attention to my paintings for a long time, my, my style paint changes per painting. I, I don't really have this idea that, you know, there's a one way to paint or one subject or one pattern, one, you know, technique. I like to play a lot. And so hopefully that comes through in my work and it should certainly look a little different on this than it did for the leopard or those eggshells or, you know, the avocado or really thick choppy paint. This is going to be uh, somewhat textured, but somewhere in between those two. I really like that. Um, I like how that, uh, leopard turned out the uh, the gold leaf. I'm gonna do more paintings with. I'm definitely gonna do more paintings with gold leaf. I've done quite a few, but I don't know. I'm inspired by that one. So what was uh, bothering me early on is that the, the key of the chroma and the and the brightness of the darks uh, really kind of had me a little, I don't know, I, I was looking at it like there's going to be a lot of problem solving, but I always like to reserve that idea for later in the painting. I like to just keep moving forward. I say it a lot that, you know, it doesn't have to be going perfect in the beginning. We don't have to have that that feeling that like you're going to leave it behind as the finished product. And so now I'm I'm appreciating a lot more. And I, I hinted earlier that I thought that was going to be the case as soon as these grasses got in because they really push things back. And so now. Um, it's, it's, it's almost like a re-energizing like you, you get just kind of a fresh feel for your painting. Need to, I need to get more medium on my palette. Oh, you turned it upside down. Yeah, it's just, uh, just the mechanics of the brush stroke. Yeah, yeah, that um, it threw me for a second. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> it's, not really bad. it's like, what happened? <laughs> Bizarre. Again, just thinking about the paint load. 
I'm painting over wet paint and I want sharp edges, so I better go back to the palette often. I could be doing all this with palette knife and I might still just do a few. But um, yeah, the brush is working right now. If anybody was watching that um, leopard going through with the uh, the whiskers on the lion, it worked perfect. On the on the leopard, it was not working, and I had to do three different strategies for getting what I wanted. And um, you know, the the first was this brush trying to do the the whiskers, and it wasn't working. And now it's working again. So it's just I don't know. I don't know if it's the painting, how much paint was down. Maybe sometimes you're, you just got it and sometimes you don't. And uh, uh, again, every, every painting is its own adventure. Just, uh, I always look, I like to look out for that. But we, we did three different strategies for getting the whiskers and the, the third one worked. The palette knife was really putting on nice fine lines with thick texture over that wet paint without killing the, um, the spots, which took forever to do. And so, um, you know, third time's a charm there. This is kind of, this is kind of doing it from, from the bat with this, with this brush that utterly failed me the last time. <laughs> Never blame the equipment. <laughs> Sounds like I'm blaming the equipment. I'm going to put a little meniscus too, where the uh, water lane breaks. And I'm going to take this hot pink. What's that? I was going to ask you about the meniscus. I'm going to do it. Okay. But first, I'm going to just keep building out these grasses. But now I'm going to change strategy and get these edges with a just kind of a gnarly brush. Is that this is going to be more of a focal point. These are further away from the grasses, so they don't have to be quite as defined. And it would have been really slow doing it with that tiny brush because you have to reload all the time or else it's going to um, just mix. It's going to make mud. So the other thing I'm going to do is after I put these, these grasses on, I'm going to put a little ripples through it. And I'm going to take these these pinks and yellows and do that. I don't. It's not in the photo, so what? I'm just going to do it anyway. So there's a lot of, I mean, for better or worse, there's a lot of creative decisions in this painting. I've I've really changed the orientation of the shapes. I've uh, designed the painting to be a Hogarth curve, and I'm going to be doing creative decisions like the. Um, like the ripples and the meniscus. These are getting all parallel, which is a problem. There we go. This was working as uh, brush strokes, but I felt like it was too big of a jump of this texture to that texture, especially as I work my way back. So just because it was working doesn't mean I should keep it. Alternatively, I could have kept this the style and smoothed all this out. And so um, maybe that was the right choice. Maybe this is the right choice. I'm going to keep doing decision making until I get to that that final final signature. I'm kind of excited about the uh, putting the ripples through. So I'm going to do that real soon.
These colors are highly exaggerated. And um, took a little while to, to like them, but now, now I'm starting to. I've gotten to the point where I, I'm usually pretty confident that I'll, I'll, I'll find the right problem solve by the end. I mean, that sounds really arrogant. Again, I'm, I'm not trying to be. It's just, uh, yeah, I think about all the, all the tension of, you know, feeling like paintings had to be perfect from the beginning and that, that, that attitude is largely gone, not, not completely. to regimen. So having fun, I'll probably revisit these ripples because they're they're putting in a little, I don't know, a little splashy, just experimenting. So I might have to revisit it just a bit, but I think it's time to just keep moving forward. And throw some reds in here. Anytime there's a like spike of dark, I should probably put a spike of dark below it. And just let it kind of meander a little bit. All right. Well, anyway, uh, a lot of these lines are maybe a little too parallel, but we'll we'll adjust. All right. Um, moving forward, I can also make textures by moving the brushwork downward. I felt like that was a little red anyway, so I'm just going to leave the red as part of the idea, and. Um, now it's now it's time to really consider reducing the textures as I go back. Way too bright there. Thanks. Better. Okay. Like I I I hinted at it earlier saying that the sky would get brighter when all this got developed. And that was true. And that's, that's another reason why you want to wait until you decide you really hate something. And so it's not like I hated it. I guess that's the wrong word, but I was just saying like, it's not working yet, but let's see what it looks like when we get more stuff in. And I just really butchered this spot. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put some of the ripples back, but I'm going to let them meander a little bit. I might really load up the brush and uh, just kind of let it drizzle on, which is a quite a different technique that um, requires a ton of medium. And then I got to be mindful of it kind of dripping a little bit. Quite all right. I want to make sure that's reading as the darkest dark. Again, these textures are just going to get slightly subdued. 
I'm going to leave that sort of orangey glow, but um, just a little less busy. I want them to read as bright against the barn or the boathouse, but um, reduced in texture and intensity than the layer in front of it. I feel like the layer in front of it is a little static too, so I'm going to, again, paint negatively. I'm going to create the texture in front of it by cutting down into it. Uh, but sometimes that doesn't look right. So I'm going to keep my eye out for maybe if I take it a tiny bit too far, then I put the textures back in and it'll, it'll feel like this layer on top of that layer. Sometimes you can get away with it. Uh, I just want to be mindful of that. And I, I like to just talk through the process anyway. So like that. I'm also going to try to be mindful not to overwork. You could put Kitty probably in the grass in the foreground. Yeah, I'll just get him to post. He's He's got a really cute. I'm going to risk ruining the camera work again, Sandra. So I'll show you. He's, oh, he's in the, ah, I don't know if I can pull it off. Ooh, where is it? Oh, I forgot. The camera's like really delayed. Yeah. It, I don't know how to show you his position right now. It's super cute. I'll take a photo of him. I'll show you in class. Oh, Sandra, I got your, um, I've got your honorable mention um, certificate. Congrats, congrats. Yeah, congratulations, Sandra. <laughs> Um, I've got pads too. Yeah, Sandra, I'll, have to, I'll take a photo of uh, Sam with the still life. Sam the cat. I'm going to try to get away with uh, putting like a pure, pure color outline on the back of the, you know, the roof of the building. I think that'll be really neat. Play with a little black backlight there. That doesn't work. There is a telephone pole there that I wasn't considering, but I might put it in. I don't think so. I still don't think so. But it goes, it cuts into the sky a lot. But it is kind of like right where this tree is, because this tree isn't in this spot in the photo. It was just something that I felt like doing. Um, but it, it would push another thing in front of the sky as a dark and a sharp edge. So I'll keep it in my mind's eye. All right, so textures are reducing. Uh, and shapes are getting more dynamic. So it's coming a little bit steadier along. I'm trying to show plane changes uh, with the distance. 
And now that I've gotten far enough back, I definitely don't want to do much in the way of grass blades. So I'm just going to work with edges. And so might also want to gray it down a little bit with a little bit of white and a little bit of blue into those green mixtures. But I have to get the value just right because that water isn't terribly bright. Uh, I feel like the water is the right value. And so I don't want to I don't want to mess with that too much. So if I make too much atmospheric perspective on the grasses, then I'd have to brighten the water. And I want the water to be akin to the blue in the sky, uh, maybe slightly grayer, which it, right now it isn't, but um, maybe slightly grayer. And, um, you know, really uh, make a comparison. I want to make sure that dark doesn't compete with this dark. I like the red. I just don't like the value. But again, none of this had to be right. Everything was just a kind of a hint based on a loose idea of what I see when I squint, where I wanted to go with the painting and uh, these ideas of, of perspective and color theory. And I think the idea before was to go really thick with this paint, but I don't think that's the strategy anymore. So I'm quite willing to change my mind. I don't want to stick dogmatically to something that, you know, I feel like is working. All right, so I'm putting little little tests down. The first one was too light, too blue. Second one was too brown and too dark. Third one was too light and too blue again. So I guess I re revisited that mistake. Not a mistake. I mean, I just put, I put a little tester down. It would have been a mistake if I uh, just blasted away with brush strokes that didn't work. And so... Uh, it can be kind of a triumph if you if you get a, that test and you stop short of, of uh, you know, feeling like you have to use it or mistakenly uh, not analyzing it before you really blast away. So I'm not going to say I'm the best at color mixing. And so those little tests to me are invaluable. They um, they stop me from making some poor decisions with paint. Now, I do know people that are phenomenal at color mixing. Great, congratulations to them. I much applause in all sincerity. It's just not me. So I'm gonna do this cautious little like little dot and I analyze it and then I adjust and then I do another dot. And this time it took three tries, you know, great. Sometimes it takes more. This reflection was a little too long. So that's why I wanted to do that color mixing in the first place. I might add another meniscus there, but not as bold. Might even scratch it. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Ooh, I'm gonna do that in the foreground too. <laughs> Never know where a painting's gonna go. <laughs> These edges are too hard, so I'm gonna I'm gonna rough the edges too. <laughs> Sandra, you guys do rock. Yeah, it's a good class. <laughs> All right, uh, let's throw a little bit of pink and purple into the water too. Yeah, good. Again, just a little, a little tester. Yeah, 
that worked. Um, okay, so still working my way back. Oh my gosh, that was a mistake. <laughs> um, still working my way back. There's um, the hint of reflections here, but they're broken by a little sliver of pink light, and I really like that. And so I'm going to put this in. Um, did I just bump the camera? Is it still doing okay, Liz? Okay. I bumped it with it. I'm really in a bad position. I'm painting around two cameras. And that was me bumping it with the brush. This time it wasn't the cat's fault. <laughs> Before that was a mess. He was he was nuzzling the camera, jumping on keyboards and clawing up my lap. Ouch. And I'm sitting here trying to talking paint. It wasn't going great. This time I'm going to defer to the painting. I'm losing a little bit of that space here, and I really like it. So I'm going to carve into that, and then I'm going to get into this tree and middle ground. Then I'm going to crisp up the edges here. I think the sky will end up getting a little bit brighter. And then, I don't know, I'll step back. I'll get some opinions. What time is it? Eight? Wow, well, I've got a whole nother hour. <laughs> I'm going to bring the distant trees down a little bit too. I like their value and color. I like how airy they are. But if they got a little bit lighter, then the building would read better. So that will be a, a little redraw when, if not considering the building, it probably would have been good enough. And again, I just want the hint of a soft edge back here. I don't want grass blades. Just because this has a hint, this has more, this has more, and this has a lot. And so with texture, we're pushing distance. That lavender blue. Tiny bit lighter than I want to go. And again, that dot did its job. I just did a tiny little tester for how dark I want to go or how bright, really. And now I can play with some of the edges, give it a tiny bit of variety, but I really don't want trees per se. I want, um, there are little bundles of distant things back there, uh, like mountain, like a, uh, Little islands of uh, trees. So by making them grayer, then the sky gets more vibrant. Which in the photo, these are rather blue. But again, just for the sake of this painting as opposed to the photo. Um, I felt like it would be better to gray them down and get them a tiny bit brighter for the sake of the house. So again, creative decisions. It's not like anything was egregiously wrong, but I'm designing the painting that I uniquely want. And uh, other other choices would have been fine too. But uh, I went with these. Again, this, this doesn't have a whole lot of uh, 
linear perspective to worry about. Back here, I uh, can push these back also by, you know, all these little subtle varieties of reds and greens and yellows and all that stuff that variety is nice to read against an area back here that's really flat. So the flatness is another way of pushing back distance. And um, I'm just going to let these be almost just one color. I might put a second tier of color back there with just like, like a light gray blue. But again, the limit is going to be the sky. And um, That's one, two, three, all the same. And I definitely want to get rid of that. And uh, everyone should know by now that, you know, that that is a very common thing. this up. Make this whole unit just one one big block instead of three bundles. And I'm also going to take the sky and work it into that bottom edge with a little bit more intensity, a little bit more blue, and a little bit brighter. A little bit brighter than that. So a lot of little subtle decisions to make. I can also trim this building while I'm at it. And I'm back to the intensity of the sky that I wanted in the first place. That really rich, bright blue, almost like pure phthalo and white. All because I darkened the things that I, I admitted from the very beginning that I was keying up a little bit on the bright side on purpose for the sake of keying the painting up. Kind of the opposite of my still lives where I want intense darks everywhere. Might be nice to take a, a blending brush to the sky too. I don't usually use blending brushes. I don't like that kind of smushy effect that they give. And some people do, there's nothing wrong with that. But um, this painting might call for it. Better. 
I think for the sake of hard edge and the layering, I'm going to, I'm going to redo that building and I'm going to go for that uh, rim light of backlight, which I think could be really cool. This tree is way too textured though. So I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up the sky that I want. I want to go a little tiny bit bluer than what I have. Might be a little bit too violet. And I'm going to cut pretty generous, generously into the tree and then put the tree back into, back into the sky. But if cutting back the tree with the sky works, then I'll reserve the idea of keeping it. It's just this texture isn't supported by the rest of the painting. So, which perfectly fine. That's, that was one of the early uh, block ins. If this got really wild in here, then that could have worked. Spike, 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 spike. I'll be redoing that too. I'm going to make the sky holes a little too big because I don't like the finished sky holes um, with the most distant layer. I like to finish them with the proximate layer. So if I go too far with the sky holes and then come back with the leaves, then it's going to feel like the proper layering, like the tree is in front of the sky, like it should be, um, rather than feeling like the sky is in front of the tree. So it's subtle. It, 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 might even be unnoticeable, but there's a feel to it that I think really applies. The other thing too is I'm a little intense green, so I'm gonna go grayer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna knock down the greenness of this tree just a bit with uh, blue gray. And again, I'm going to get rid of some of the texture. I'm going to make sure that it feels like it has a dynamic edge without having brush strokes. Just not, it would just would not, it, in its current stage, it just does not work with the textures in here. Uh, and I've lost all my sky holes again, but don't, I didn't do it right. And I got to do it again. The other thing too is if we have this much warmth, I could turn the tree into a little refracted light, which would really kind of make it more pink purple than green. Maybe I'll experiment with that. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. Definitely don't want this rich of a dark back here anyway. So it's all going to be forward progress. 
getting a little too repetitive again. And I know better. I, I just, you know, you, you just kind of do some things and it's just like that, that human tendency for equal patterns and symmetry and um, all that comes out. See, I can prove I'm human after all. All right, so this dark wasn't really working with the building anyway. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bring this together. I'll put the sky holes back in and then I'll do the final edges and be done with the trees. But I want them to feel distant and I want them to feel a little bit of that refracted light coming through them. So it's checking a lot of boxes. It's just now I made them solid and bing, 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 bing. Too repetitive. And then I'm going to throw that orange on the border of the house. I think that's going to be really neat. Doesn't really belong, but so what? So now, now I brought the trees together. I'm gonna mix up that that pink purple. Jeez, that's bad. Ooh, maybe I should throw some birds back there. Ha! <laughs> Happy accident. We'll get to that later. Maybe that's the final touch. Way too dark. Thanks. Hmm. Well, you know, they say fifth time's a charm. Mixed up a big old glob of it too. So now I don't really need a whole lot of variety in sky holes, but it's nice that it, it color matches the sky just, you know, kind of well. And now that I have a big old glob of it, it's going to definitely sit on top. But what I, I need to be conscious of is just creating more of the same problem. Repetition, uh, too high a texture. Um, uh, too thick a paint because I want the thick paint in the foreground. And um, I, I want the textures to be diminished from the middle ground. The, the foreground is, is pretty bold. So I don't think I have to worry about that so much. But um, again, I'm going to be really generous with these sky holes so that I can cover them back over as part of the strategy, so it'll look temporarily wrong. And then I'll bring the tree back over these sky holes and hopefully be done with the tree because I don't want to dwell on here too long. This is background element. Background elements are more known for ruining a painting than helping it. But it's a nice little supporting element. It gives it uh, something tall, which March scenes can be very flat. So that's a, that's a good thing. It's in the photo. It's just not here. It's further over. And... Um, 
again, I'm being way too generous with that, with those sky holes, with the hopes of just scaling it back and, um, you know, covering over, covering over these edges with a little bit of uh, tree texture. Just having just be little hints, little pockets. Ah, one, two, three, all the same. That's where I'd consider going, you know, just copying what I see on the photo. I'm struggling to make it up. Oh, I said I was going to take a blending brush to the sky. I might not need to. I don't think it's necessary. So by bringing this out, it'll break up that line. I kind of cut into the sky with um, thin, with uh, weak paint, so it didn't sit on top. That's what I was cautioning before. No big deal. It's just a little problem solve. I don't want a mixing. I don't want to make like a lavender green that is not sky or tree it's just some kind of blob in between and it seems like it's being really nitpicky and perhaps i am but just little little tiny things i want this to fit in just the right zone of distance texture contrast uh i want it to definitely feel like the sky is uh light and airy against these dark trees but i don't want the trees to be as dark as the middle ground and i don't want the um the textures here to compete with the textures back here. I want these to be smoother. And so it's just, I don't know. I don't, I guess I don't have to be this picky about it. Um, but I am so, <laughs> so there's that. Much better shape. Three three spikes in a row is just too much. Um, I can't wait to see the building, that meniscus of light on the building. And um, oh, then I'll just have to step back and see see what I'm seeing. Just working the edges to feel like the tree is in front of the sky. Keeping the values somewhat subdued compared to what's in front of it. And then just checking myself for symmetry and repetitive pattern. That seems like it's far back there. All right, so let's put that meniscus on. I might uh, pull together the brushwork over here because it's streaky. It's that sort of blocking stuff. There's a little odd moment here, but uh, I don't know. I'm probably just wrapping it up. Anyone have any concerns or critiques or bad mouthing or heckling you want to do? Just go for it. 
I mean, or you can be nice, either way. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was going to play with the water, too. Um, that was kind of a quick idea. Typically, when you make things up, um, the first version is just a suggestion. It's, it's only going to be, it's like, well, what, what's going to work and what's not? Sometimes it, sometimes you luck out, but I don't really expect it to. I was just kind of playing with ripples. So I might pull that together and, st and do that over again. Still too shaky even for the mall. I don't have the mall stick of doom, that's why. I'll get a straight line. Don't worry. I like that. Yeah, it's not there, and it actually doesn't make sense here, but I kind of like it, and so I might, I might just make it a tiny bit subdued, and leave it. Even though, again, it doesn't really make sense. It's back. If it's backlit, the tree would be blocking it. And again, if you point that out, I'll congratulate you <laughs> and just say, "Oh, you really know your stuff." <laughs> but just a creative decision. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Andrew. So really garish landscape. I, I really wanted to, to just go a little crazy with color chroma and try to make it work. Um, And again, it was just kind of a problem solve. It's like, what can I get away with and what, what can't I? And instead of going with really rich darks, I went with kind of light middle, uh, you know, on the, on the light side of darks without um, exaggerating the darks like I normally do. And so that was just a little bit of a, a deviance from the typical painting that I do. And... Um, just for the sake of really keying this up quite high with color, I wanted to I wanted to make this just a little bit on the on the garish side, and scale back from there. However, I need to do it. So there's little varieties of the sky in here. I might take some of that um, kind of vivid green yellow down. Oh, like. Might take some of that down into the clouds and create some color variety there. I think that'd be nice. I'm going to create a brighter bright here. And um, again, just kind of design a little pattern in here. It's going to be less intense and less bright than that. So now you can hear how I'm just kind of Comparing, I'm just going to say, well, it fits into a box of color and value that I already have established. In fact, I think I need to get some more white out because my white has been thoroughly compromised. But again, I'm, I'm cranking up the color intensity quite on purpose. I just wanted a nice, vibrant painting, something that could just um, really grab attention from across the room. Like pure yellow back there. That's that's a little over the top, but uh, that streak of red is arguably a tiny bit bright, or I'm sorry, a little bit dark. I mean, and uh, 
Yeah, there's some fine tuning to do. It could probably be called good enough. And so that's what I call the law of diminishing returns. You can get to a point where you could call it done. You could you could sign it, but you just know that every new thing that you add is going to be slightly less impactful uh, the more you add. Like So this next little nitpick is not going to do as much uh, as the next or as the as the previous and it's just going to keep getting less and less impactful so then i can decide is like well does it actually need this next thing and uh once that answer gets to be no i sign it it's done and uh, that's going to be very personal some artists are going to take it a lot farther and some artists are going to leave it a lot looser it's just it's going to be very personal um and i would just say even for me uh that that note changes per painting and per mood so sometimes i'll be in the mood to really chop it up maybe i didn't even want to take it this far but maybe the maybe the next painting would articulate these grasses a little less loose and you know really pull it together or do every little detail or you know every you know there's not much ripples in this painting i made that up but you know what i mean so uh, diminishing returns, yeah, you're, you're going to get less and less out of each new edition. At some point, you have to be done or else, you know, you really got to make sure this painting is worth it to justify <laughs> working on it to the end of time. Um, <laughs> some paintings, you know, some paintings, yeah, sometimes you have a really serious project or maybe you have a really picky client. I definitely know how that goes. And, uh, you know, you're going to work on it for a very long time. And that that point of diminishing returns, like, you know, okay, you're just going to keep going, even though that, that next brushstroke is going to be less impactful. And so I, I think I'm getting close to the point where I have to really consider whether that next little nitpick is worth it. Is it going to improve the enjoyment of the painting? And if the answer is no, then I ought to, I ought to just call it and be done. That's a little dark. I'm going to brighten that up. <clears throat> so what's everyone think? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work this. I'm going to get this a little bit brighter. I'm going to rework the ripples just a little bit. Um, oh, what do you think? There's a lot of paint in this painting. More than I thought I was going to.
So again, we just want to brighten up the clouds just a tiny, tiny bit. And uh, that's a work in progress. It's, it's still got to build a little bit, but um, the ripples. And then I, I really think after the ripples, it'll probably be probably time to sign. I'm going to take like pure yellow and sign it in the grasses. Um, but I'm open to feedback and criticism and chit chat. So just let me know what's on your mind about the painting. If you have any questions, just, just let me know. I think the disparity of this blue from that purple, I think, is too much. I'm going to get a fresh brush. I'm going to make that really, really um, more vivid to match the blue. I like the blue. So, again, nothing wrong with this, and there's nothing wrong with that. They're just a little out of harmony. And so... Little tiny adjustment. I think a tiny bit brighter than what I just did, and it'll be just right. better. Now it won't feel like it's too big of a jump. And 9.30, two and a half hours. I got started mostly on time. One of the clouds a little bit, a little bit smoother anyway. They're way back there. They're made of water vapor. You know, we can we can push the disparity of the sky from the landscape anyway. And so, just knocking down the brushwork, I'm getting the the two tiers just a little bit more harmonious with more blue. Uh, it was looking just maybe a little bit uh, red of a purple instead of a more of a blue purple, more of an indigo. And I'm happier with that. Tiny bit brighter. That's that's better. I think too is that that changed when the sky got brighter. I put like pure off white yellow up there, and that made this dark, which definitely is a common thing. You know, you change one thing and it changes another. You're never painting just one small spot of a painting. Everything everything affects everything all the time.
All right, cool. So, um, like I said before, I'm going to redo the ripples. They were a fun idea. I just uh, kind of executed them in haste. Well, not, not in haste. It was just an experiment. That's a better way to put it. Haste kind of sounds like I was just rushing it, like I didn't care. I, I did care. I just was trying something. That brush is in too good of shape. I want a brush that will be a little bit more randomized. So I'll get the meniscus back in and then just do a little bit of ripple work. It's it's not it's not going to be like rapids. I got to be careful about too much texture. It's pretty smooth water. It's going to have like little, you know, little frogs and bugs and stuff and fish, you know, agitating the water. So I don't want it super smooth either. I'm just trying to find that happy medium. Whoa, <laughs> what was that? Oh, I was going to try that drizzling technique. Good enough. Now I'm just kind of creating a little chaos. Oops, too much. <laughs> um, just not to make it too smooth. Like not, it, by busying this up, it makes that smoother. 
Again, everything in a painting affects everything. And, um, you know, it's always a little bit risky to make things up, but it's also rewarding in that, um, you know, you're making creative decisions here. Um, you, I, I don't really want to feel like a photocopier. There's nothing wrong with that artistically. You can create beautiful paintings. People enjoy looking at them and having them in their home. But uh, I'd like to make sure that the creator here is me um, as the artist, uh, not, not the camera. You know, so even though I took this shot and I really, I like it and I could cut, copy it verbatim, I, I enjoy it more when I'm making creative decisions um, to enhance the colors or play with textures and here just playing with uh, just different effects of the water getting from busier to smoother. Um, so I'm going to take the pure yellow of the sky. And I'm going to sign it here, but that doesn't mean I'm necessarily done. I'm just going to take a little while to you know, see what's clicking and what's not. I could scratch this. I don't know if the gray of the, the ground is bright enough. Yeah, no, it's not working at all. What's scratching going to do? No, I have tiny brushes for that, but mm, kind of works. I don't know. So what's everybody think? It's okay. Nobody. See you, Sandra. Guess I'm done.
Oh, thanks, Claudia. Yeah, that was just a little, I don't know, it was just something I thought um, might be fun. And uh, yeah, I agree with you, When especially when it was in front of the tree. I thought that was too bright. But um, I just wanted to give it a little chance to kind of gel a little. And that sometimes I, I, I judge the creative decisions too soon. I just got to let them, let them sit and gel for a little bit and see if I still like them after a, I don't know, good 10 minutes or so. But yeah, it was the same thing. I put them in and it was like, ah, maybe. <laughs> but this whole painting is keyed up so much that uh, I, felt, I felt like I could get away with it. Ah, I like the sign paintings all the but it is not working in this corner. I might try somewhere else. Maybe, maybe in the sky. Maybe here where it's smoother. So I really wanted a tiny bit more space in between these two clumps. I like that better. Just gonna complete the job, smooth some of this out so it doesn't seem out of place. Well, oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Failed three times to sign it now. So I probably should wait till the next, till it's dry. But what fun would that be? A little trap here. <laughs> That's better. I just had too much paint in the foreground. And it was the wrong value because the gray of the board was not bright enough to scratch, which is a great way of signing a la prima. And I just, I like signing a la primas uh, in the wet and the wet sitting. It just kind of seals the deal as a single sitting painting. Definitely harder to do. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to call it. This one was. I guess uh, shorter than three hours uh, to make up for the fact that the leopard was way over three hours. 
So now we got some balance. This wasn't even the uh, landscape I was going to do. But I swear I transferred it over to my drive from the art school and then it just didn't one there. Can't you access your um, hard drive your hard drive from your house? Uh, it's not well that's the thing is I thought I transferred it from the files at the Schuler School onto my drive. But it's not on their drive. If it was on their drive, I have access to it. Oh, okay. But um, it's not. It's on the hard drive, and I don't have access to it. But I swore I put it on my drive. And then, like, right before this session, I was in a mad scramble to find, <coughs> find something. Came across this. This must have been... Um, Gosh, how long ago would this have been? Probably, we stopped going to the Eastern Shore probably about 2012, something like that. You know, uh, you know, things got busy between uh, buying a house and then later haunts. And the, the place we stayed uh, got a bad uh, roof leak and kind of got destroyed. Oh. Oh, you um, you signed it already in the top right corner, right? I did. I kept trying to sign on the lower, lower right, and it just wasn't working. Yeah, I can't see the I N. All right. Yeah. Well, something to look for. I don't know, I think it's a little distracting up there. I mean, I kind of liked it down here. It's just, it just wasn't working. I might just have to give up on my idea that I, I really like signing all the primas wet and wet, but just not, I'm just not liking it. Merp. You got Yeah, I don't know. I hate to get out another brush. <laughs> All right, this time I'm going to get it right. It's got to work. Ooh, I don't like that spot either. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. I'm boring everybody with failed attempt after failed attempt with signature. <laughs> Not true. You enjoy watching me fail? Jeez, Liz. No. <laughs> It's very hard to do it. There's a lot of pain here. This is an area that I wanted to kind of chunk it up a little bit. Again, kind of lead people in with texture. And it's just hard to sign on top. It's just, it's just so distracting in the sky and everything else would be too, I mean, it'd be really distracting in the middle. This is, this is usually the place people sign their signatures anyway, but, um, I don't always stick to that. Sometimes I'll put it in creative places. Like if there's like a brick wall, maybe I'll sign my name in graffiti. One time I put my name on the, like a backward facing hat on somebody, like a figure. Oh, wow. Um, you know, it should show up but uh, not be distracting. And you just gotta walk that tight rope. So right here is nondescript enough. It's bright though. It looks really nice though. No, 
I'm having trouble making it artistic because I'm just fighting the paint. Here, we'll, we'll flare out the end. <laughs> I've seen people totally kill a painting with their signature. I'm trying, I'm really trying not to do that. That might be a little too bright. <laughs> I don't know. I might be able to just glaze it. I was trying to bring the sky back in, but it's just too high contrast. I don't know. Whatever. I'm going to leave it just because I don't feel like doing it again. Done so. Okay. So let me see how something else to make. You too, Claudio. Okay. And I'll have to take a photo of the cat for Sandra. She's already gone though. All right. Uh, let me get the camera a little closer to the painting. I just got to wash my hands off a little bit first. Yeah. And so this painting is uh, sort of the garish version of what um, what the photograph looks like. Again, just having fun with it. There's such a wicked delay in YouTube. But I can I can put the photo on there anyway. So. Uh, Hopefully you're seeing good colors. All right. So mix it up a little bit, get a landscape in. Hope you enjoyed it. Can you put it so I can see it on Zoom a little better? Oh. Um. Is, is that better? Yeah, it's good. Okay, good. Thank maybe, you, Maybe I can do the same for YouTube. The problem is with YouTube is I'm moving it, and then it's like a two-second delay. So I think I'm making the right adjustment, and then it goes completely off the picture. There it is. It's really nice. You're welcome. Glad you enjoyed it. All right. Good night. Good night. And thanks for everyone for joining. Okay.